The project now is the vertical stabilizer. Gonna start getting all the parts laid out, prepped, and ready to go. And before you know it, should have a vertical stabilizer complete. What I'm going to do now is take my machinist square and go along all of these tabs, these flanges, and make sure that after I did the fluting, I didn't, didn't disturb any of these and they're not square. So I'll go ahead and if I find any, then I'll take my duckbill pliers, get on there, give it a little twist, and get it nice and square. So far, I haven't really seen any that are in any need of adjustment. These all look pretty good. I also wanna check in between where I did the fluting, because I did have some deformation there. I wanna make sure that I didn't get any that bumped out too far. I actually have one right here. It came out just a little bit far, so I'll take the pliers and, and flatten that out. I'll just go through and make sure that everything is in a nice perpendicular plane from this surface of the rib. Got all of my vertical stabilizer ribs fluted, sitting good and flat. I'm gonna prime the spars and the spar doublers. Wherever there are uh, material that's getting riveted together, I'm gonna go ahead and prime those surfaces using the uh, single part black SEM primer. Bars and doublers are primed, and I'm ready to move on to clecoing this thing together. I have the vertical stabilizer partially clecoed together. I wanted to see where things were going to sit, what holes were going to be used for what, uh, because what I want to do is I'm going to use solid uh, AD rivets to join the doublers in all those holes to the spar in both the rear and in the front spar. And I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't gonna be putting any rivets in any areas that were gonna need anything. Like the lower rib, as an example. I'm gonna make sure I leave those three out. It looks like everything else is, is open. I went through the schedule that RANS provides and for the riveting, and I had to determine which rivets I need to use. Since I'm doing the solid rivets, the schedule they provide isn't really gonna work for me. So I went through, stuck some rivets in the holes. I measured the stick out on the back side, made sure I had at least one and a half times the diameter of the rivet left over. And what I came up with is all the spots marked 42 are 84-5. Marked 44 is a 4-7. And some of the ones marked 46 are a 4-8, with the exception of the ones all of them, with the exception of the ones that I've noted specifically here. And actually, I just realized this third one and this third one are also. Um, these three on the very bottom of the forward spar are 4-7s. And these three on the bottom of the rear spar are 4-9s. The reason for that was there was a little extra thickness here with because there's a rib here. And then here, the there isn't three thicknesses like there is on the um, rear spar. So that was a shorter one. So anyhow, this is what I ended up with. This gives me all the right lengths. So if by some chance you're gonna do solid rivets, that's probably what you're gonna end up with there.
Got my vertical stabilizer framework all put together. I got all the solid rivets in here. They turned out real nice. I did solid rivets on the back side of the ribs or the, on the back side of the uh, stabilizer. On the front side, I went ahead and just did the pulled rivets. It was just easier rather than trying to get a gun in a bucking bar in here. I just went ahead and did the pulled rivets. But I got the solid rivets everywhere else. And I think it turned out pretty nice. Let's flip it over, look at the, look at the back side here. Yeah. Okay. A couple areas of my ribs, you can see there's a there's a little bit of a gap here. If I if I put the Clico, I got all my Clicos here. If I do the Clicos here, here, and here, I end up with a pretty visual dip on the outside of the vertical there. So what? there's two ways to approach this. Depends on the severity of it. I had that happen uh, on these here. And what I did is I took the Clicos out and I just took a hammer and a, and a drift and I kind of bent the tabs down a little bit uh, as close to the rib as possible and kind of stretched the metal there. And that pushed them down and made contact with the skin so I didn't get that waviness look on the outside. Here it's a little severe. I'm probably going to make a, uh, a shim that's gonna fit right in there and take up that gap. a slight break in the trailing edges of the leading edge skin of the vertical stabilizer and this is just so that when you rivet everything together you don't have the skin wanting to kind of uh, pop out a little bit if you just break that edge a little bit it kind of creates a little spring and it holds everything down nice and tight for that job I use this little hockey puck roller uh, I've been using these for this kind of a task and I prefer it. I also have another same version of this, but it's on like a stick and it has the two wheels if you're trying to get into a tight spot. But for this one, you get a nice good grip on it here. I'll just set their rollers on there, give it a slight angle inwards and just drag it across. The amount of, of bend that you get is determined obviously by how much you twist it this way, but also how much you, if you imagine the, the sheet is going in through here, also how much you rotate it this way in relation to the direction that you're going. You can, and that's exaggerated, it's just a small amount, but if you just give it a little tweak while you also bend it, so I bend it and then tweak it a little bit and then roll it across, you get a nice clean line. That's what you want to see. Just a little bend right there, you can see in the light.
sometimes you'll find that the holes don't quite line up. And now a lot of times you can just wiggle a Clico in there and it'll kind of find its way. I could probably do that with this one. If it's, if it's really bad, what I'll do is I'll fish a pick in there and I'll just drive the pick in there and the taper of it will kind of help locate. And what you can do is you can come to the hole next to it, drive a Clico there, and then when you take this out, it's usually gonna stay put or close to it, then you can put your Clico in there. I found that works pretty well. I'm getting everything ready to check for twist. What I've decided on doing is using an aluminum tube. And I, I couldn't get a one of my digital levels to fit inside here. So what I did is I just took a string level and taped it to the tube. And I got that setting in there. Now, a word of caution, I guess. Um, I see this method done and it can work. The issue is um, these... Clecos are not precision ground tools. And as an example, if I take this one here, you can see my bubble level right there. If I take this one and I turn it, just rotate it, you're gonna see that bubble level change. I'm turning it. See how it moved there? If I turn it back, and it goes there. And the reason is as, I'm, as you're turning this, the body is not centered with the hole that it's, that it's put in. And you can actually, you can see this happening here. So make sure you find a Clico, go through your Clicos and, and find one that's as concentric as possible before you do this test, just to make sure that you're gonna get accurate results. So get you four good Clicos and do that. Uh, this is actually where uh, a precision ground tool here, little dowel pins uh, with like a Clico type clamp would be really useful here. Uh, but I'm just gonna go through my bin, find some good Clicos and get back to it. I've got everything set up and straight. There's no twist in the vertical. I've got everything weighted down with my lead bags. So I guess it's time to match drill these here. It's kind of a scary proposition because once, once you drill, <laughs> that's it. The, the twist that it sits in is what you get. But uh, I have checked, triple checked. I'm, I'm dead nuts level there. And I've got the same thing on the other side. So uh, I guess it's time to Go for it. One side is now fully matched, drilled, and clecoed. I put a cleco in every one. That was a couple down here I didn't do, but for the most part, I put one in every one on, on this step because now I'm gonna flip it over, check for level again. I don't want any movement. So I made sure this is all fully clecoed right here on this seam. And uh, next I'll flip it over. I expect it to just set level. Uh, shouldn't have to tweak anything, but I'll get that going and match drill the other side. And at that point, take it all apart, deburr, and then get ready for assembly. Flipped everything over, set it up on my fixture blocks on that end, leveled it, came over here, and I just kind of set the blocks up where it was just resting there, and it was almost dead nuts level. I had to come in and add a little shim here to get me level there, but uh, so far, so good. I'm gonna go ahead and match drill these. It's amazing that even though the one side is clecoed, when I, and I needed to add that shim right there, when I added that shim and I picked that up and slid that shim in, I could actually see just a little bit of, of, of uh, like a shearing movement between these two panels. It wasn't much, but it was, I could see it, I could visually see it. 
So that's just indication to me that it's it really does make sense to just check, triple check, do everything before you do any drilling. Um, even if you've got one side done, do it again because you can still get a little movement there. But I am set. So now when I do it, this is absolutely where it's going to be. But I'm, I'm confident that everything's going to be okay. I'm doing the doublers that I designed for the uh, backside here of the spar. And I'm doing this because I'm doing the solid rivets. You'll hear me explain that in the other videos. Uh, I'm doing solid rivets instead of the pulled rivets for the hinges. So what I've done is I have temporarily clecoed the doubler to the outside of the spar so that I can match drill these four holes here for dash three rivets. And then I'll be able to mount it, it goes on the inside. I'll mount it to the inside with the dash three rivets and at that point then it's ready for me to install the hinges. I don't need a doubler at the bottom end here, only at the top because at the bottom I've got all these doublers here already, and there's already quite a bit of material here, about three eighths thick worth of material on the back side of the spar anyway. So it's pointless for me to add another 062, it wouldn't do anything. So uh, just the, just the uh, doubler up here. So I'll go ahead and get that riveted. And at that point, like I say, I'll put the hinges on and I'll have to custom cut my rivet lengths. I bought my rivets, my dash six rivets long, um, so I can cut them to size with my rivet cutter there, and then whatever need to be a longer size to go through all this here. Same as I did with the horizontal elevator hinges. I like to screw the two hinge pieces together here. That way I know they're all in line and everything's lined up right. And just kind of snug it down a little bit. And I'll Clico this in place on the diagonal. I'll run a number 11 through there just to kind of make sure that these holes are cleaned up and good to go and get my rivets out and uh, get some rivets cut to size and smash them rivets. Rivets for the lower hinge need to be quite a bit longer. So I'm really just taking a little bit off of this here. Oop. There we go. That should do it.
got the hinges riveted on. And here's the shop side of the heads here. And down here, floor hinge. And those shop heads here for these rivets. I'm gonna get the skin laid on here. I'm gonna get this cleat coat in place and check the fit again. Got it back on the fixture here. And what I've done is uh, check the level on the root here or at the end. And I'm right there in the middle. And you know, sometimes it's, it's a good idea to take it and flip it around and get another reading. And if it's the same, that'll tell you that your level is accurate, in which case it is. So that's good. So now I'll take this over here and I'll do the same. And we're level there. And just for the heck of it, I'll flip it around. Make sure we're resting on that there. I'm gonna start inserting my rivets here. In most cases, they'll drop right in, but I'm finding that on the vertical here, for some reason, they're just, I can get them in, but I might be fighting them. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and chase all the holes with my um, number 30 chucking reamer and just kind of clean those up. It's not gonna hurt anything, and that way I know I can just drop all my rivets right in place. The side is fully riveted. I'm gonna flip it over now and do the other side. Got her flipped over. Everything's been checked again for twist. Everything is straight. I'm gonna go ahead and rivet. The rudder is done. The only exception being the tip. I'm holding off on the tip because I am going to be putting a beacon uh, on the tip right here. I found a nice little micro sized beacon uh, that is like inch and a half diameter. Most 
typical beacons are like two and a quarter or two and a half inches in diameter, which I felt would have been too big. They also stand up really tall. And I found this really nice uh, miniature sized one uh, that's actually used for uh, small unmanned aerial systems, but it meets all the specs for, you know, 360 degrees red and it's nice and bright. So it's nice and low profile. So I'm gonna be figuring out that situation here. Once I get that all done, then I'll go ahead and install the tip. But except from that, uh, the tip is done, or the, the vertical stabilizer is done. And like with all the other components, I didn't really have anything crazy. Uh, everything went together just fine. Well, that wraps it up for the vertical stabilizer video. You'll see I've got some tail cone stuff going on and the cage over there. So in a coming video, it's gonna be tail cone stuff and then followed by cage prep. So progress is happening. Thanks for watching.